Hello, it's Steve White here, and thank you for joining me for another Lo-Fi session where we're taking a little look at some of the drumming contributions of some fantastic songs. Um, today I'm going to be talking about two songs from the album Heavy Soul. Heavy Soul was the um, so solo album by Paul Weller, and it came out after Stanley Road, and um, it should have gone to number one, but somebody at the record company decided that they would put in some free postcards, which meant that we got deducted a certain amount of um, sales that week. So it came sailing in at number two, which is no, um, still no mean achievement. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Peacock Suit was on this record, the uh, title track Heavy Soul, as you lead into the light. Um, and then the two songs that I'm going to talk about today. The first is a song called Up in Susie's Room, which was always a... I know a very much a fan favourite and also very much one of my favourites because it was just quite subtle and, and the drumming was quite sort of soulful and I really, uh, really enjoyed playing that one. A couple of changes in the studio today. Um, I've changed my cymbal setup. I've actually got some Avidus cymbals up uh, now. I've just, they're slightly brighter, um, maybe more for sort of rock or funk uh, than the K Constantinopoles, but still a really lovely cymbal. So that's the Avida cymbals and I finished off with a little snare flurry there for a snare drum that I've kind of put in for the session. Um, this is slightly different, I was using the fibes previously, the, the, clear, um, the clear fibes, but this is back to the old favourite Radio King. Now this particular Radio King is 8 inches deep which makes it quite a rarity. It's a cloud badge drum so this drum is nearly 90 years old but it's absolutely phenomenal, it's got a real kind of fat, um, fat tone to it and really sensitive just that kind of unique sound that those one piece maple shells um, give you that it's an absolute delight to play a really really lovely drum It's got the stick chopper hoops and uh, it's in white marine pearl and the uh, teardrop style lugs. It's an absolute beauty. So I thought I'd use it today um, because it has a relevance to the songs that we're going to be talking about because I was using a Radio King snare drum on the sessions. Now for this particular album we'd moved away from the Manor Studios which was um, obviously owned by Mr Richard Branson. I think the studio closed down at some point, maybe around that time, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, we started to move around and go to different places. We went to Jacob's Studios. We eventually ended up in Heliocentric down in Rye and, and a few other places along the way. But this particular record was recorded at the War Hall, which is uh, down in the West Country um, and was owned at the time by Van Morrison, who was around and about. We could see him sort of wandering around, although he didn't really come in and say hi too much, but uh, he was there and he had the studio and uh, myself and Max and Brendan and Paul and Marco all decamped um, off to the, the West Country to, to do the album. Now, this for me was a fairly complete song when Paul first played it to me. He he'd obviously he'd got a lot, of, uh, a lot of work had gone into it and he was kind of playing it acoustically. So I, I wanted to uh, just compliment what he was actually um, doing and leading the way on in terms of playing me the song when we were demoing it. So I just got this overriding feel of, of like a second line sort of New Orleans like type intro, which um, it, it sort of sounded like this. So the guitar kind of starts and then the drums come in and I'm just playing this. So in the bass drum, I'm just literally playing a three beat clave. And then the snare drum is kind of going with the guitar rhythm. It's got almost like a what I would call a bow diddly type feel to the guitar. Bap, 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 bap. That's quite a popular uh, riff, a quite a popular um, thing to use in, in rock. It's been used uh, for many, many years. Um, but you know that that kind of feel 
is what kind of came to me when Paul played me that acoustic guitar uh, demo. So the, the accent in the snare drum part is this. And you couple that with the bass drum pattern, the three beat clave, and you get this. So that's how I came up with that intro and we reused that um, little motif uh, uh, later on in the song. Uh, it comes back a couple of times when we go to the middle section of the song, there's a breakdown and then it comes back in. So the main kind of groove of the song, uh, there was a definite swing to it and I felt like a little influence of like New Orleans, I felt a little bit of that in there, sort of the work of Lee Dorsey and possibly um, for me the drumming had a little touch of Hercules, the, uh, the fantastic tune by Aaron Neville which is one of my favourites and it's kind of a swung feel, it's, it's just, um, you know, with drumming it all kind of comes from like a swung feel. And then eventually drummers like Earl Palmer straightened out the feel when they were playing sort of with uh, Little Richard and, and the early rock and rollers. But it's all derived from the same place and there's plenty of great information about the history of swung and straight and how it all kind of works in terms of drumming. So I could feel that it was like swinging and I, as I say my influence for the drum part was um, Hercules by Aaron Neville which is a tune that we played a few times live. We did a few tunes in that sort of vein. We did um, a Taj Mahal tune um, at one point and obviously we covered the uh, Walk on Gilded Splinters um, on Stanley Road. Um, so we all love that kind of music, the Neville Brothers, the Meters, Professor Longhair, that just wonderful New Orleans legacy. I, I love jazz, I love all the way back to Louis Armstrong and I love some of the uh, amazing drummers, the fantastic Earl Palmer, Stanton Moore, um, Idris Muhammad, these are all just killer, killer players, Johnny Vidakovich, that have really got their own thing in terms of drumming, which is just wonderful. So um, I, I just wanted to channel a little, a little bit of that. I wanted to keep everything straight, even though like, it was a swung tune. I didn't do, I didn't like play a, you know, that kind of thing. I just kept the hi-hat playing like a straight feel and then intimated the swing in the interplay between the bass drum and the snare drum with some little ghost notes and, and you know just in, in the right place musically that I felt. So coming out of the snare drum uh, intro sounded like this, I went into the main groove of the song. So that was kind of it and I played uh, an accent with the guitar and didn't do a fill coming back into it just to keep it all tight. That was the thing I liked about these songs is the drums really had like a purpose and a place. So the feel was kind of just that swung sort of thing and it uh, moved between the second line thing on the bass drum and just that really nice kind of soulful feel. Um, when I started to play it live, I actually moved it over and played the, the main rhythm on the X hat, which is over here. I just sort of like the, the contrast in feel in the way I played it. And that was the sort of uh, breakdown, uh, the, 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 the drums just drop down to play on the ride cymbal and then come in and the guitars are accenting on one, and I'm playing the second line sort of inspired thing underneath it. So for me, a really, really lovely song, very atmospheric, very, very well constructed and clearly a, 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 fa a favourite of, of yours because I get lots of lovely responses about that.
Now the other song that I'm going to talk about was also on the same record and it's called Brushed. Slightly different, um, we were talking about sort of songs, um, well one particular song which is the great Tomorrow Never Knows um, with featuring the amazing Ringo Starr on drums. Now, as drummers, we all know and love that particular beat um, because it's just an absolute classic. It's a, it's a, it's a riff, it's, a, it's very much part of the composition and it's incredibly innovative uh, in terms of production and just got a great feel to it. So the drums are very consistent in that tune and on Brushed we wanted something quite similar. So the guitars are fairly sort of pulsing and there's like a, lots of ambience and lots of uh, different sound effects. So the drums needed to cut through with something in a sort of Tomorrow Never Knows kind of style. Now, this particular song, it ended up being pretty much a co-write between myself, Paul, and Marco. Um, Marco and I came up with some lyrics, but they weren't fantastic, and Paul kind of knocked them into shape as he did, and, and we, got the song, we got the song together, and it had a kind of a, a really nice sort of, sort of sonic, sort of slightly psychedelic feel about it. But the bass drum and the snare drum were playing sort of fairly consistently. that kind of monotonous tomorrow never knows sort of feel that uh, just repetitive thing and then on the toms I put a an accent on the one two and three and four So it kind of gave it a little bit of space and air, but it was meant to be very sort of repetitive. Um, I filled the hole on the first beat of the bar by playing a little hi-hat flourish, this. On beat one. And then I put it together. A nice little coordination exercise for any of you drummers out there. The thing is, in the studio, at one point, um, I think it was Brendan suggested that we needed it to sound a little bit fuller. And referring back to Tomorrow Never Knows, where there is the hi hat, the ride pattern that sort of goes very, um, very, very sort of accurately and consistently th throughout the track. They wanted something like that. Brendan wanted something like that. So I had to reconstruct the part and play the whole thing with my left hand while playing the consistent ride symbol with my right hand. So I got this thing going. And then I put it all together. And that's how I came up with the uh, drum part to Brushed, which is um, quite a little challenge. It's if you could break that one down, um, none of the songs today that I've been talking about, the drums are, are you know, doing sort of crazy stuff because that's not what the, the role of the drummer is. It's to make the song sound good and to make the other musicians happy with your contribution. So forgive me because it's not all about exploding all over the drums, but just trying to explain my position as a musician in creating what I consider some fantastic music. So thanks for listening and thanks for watching, obviously. Um, keep up the contacts. We should do some... Uh, ask Steve's again very very soon uh, in the meantime um, just try and stay as positive as possible and uh, I'll see you again for another lo-fi session maybe nice to get some of your uh, suggestions um, coming in I mean we've got the style council uh, do documentary coming out next month and uh, this is this is uh, obviously September 2020 if you're watching this in uh, October 2035 um, but basically we've got the style council documentary which is fantastic and we've also got like a, a new compilation and very soon hopefully by now this is September 2020 again um, you will be aware of the new Hagen White single which I hope you will uh, show some support for so in the meantime thanks very much and I will see you soon
Bye.